I thought he loved Donut. He made science look so fun, he had an entertaining program and all, but all that is pretty much in the 90s. I could be proving for days that his points from his seminar in fa are in fact valid. Charles Darwin and Clarence Darrow said. This is what Charles Darwin and Clarence Darrow said. This is what Charles Darwin and Clarence Darrow said. You'd like to keep saying, oh, there are many religions out there. Well, so what? Most of these religions are completely unscientific, where the Bible is scientific. <laughs> Most of these religions are completely unscientific, where the Bible is scientific. You know, calling the Bible scientific is completely wrong. Not only is the Bible embarrassingly incorrect on most scientific and mathematical claims that it makes, it's arguably anti-science, holding obedience and trust in God over scientific investigation and skepticism. So, no, Christianity is unscientific too. Uh, if you want to get technical, it's probably one of the most unscientific. Uh, it, it, it's a religious faith. Don't... Don't try to make it anything more. Did you know it's because of Bible-believing Christians that we have the modern benefits of many branches of science today? Isaac Newton, Johannes Kepler, James Clerk Waxwell, and Raymond Dominion, the guy who invented the MRI. Yes, science has been contributed to by Christians, and Muslims, and Jews, and people of every religion, or no religion. But so what? Christianity offers no help to a scientist. Is calculus in the Bible? No. Are the schematics for MRI scanners in the Bible? No. Are Kepler's laws in the Bible? No. What allowed these Christian scientists to perform competently in their respective fields uh, was the scientific method and a respect for genuine and objective investigation. Also, uh, it's worth noting that Raymond Madian only built the first MRI. He didn't invent the technology, and his one was very lacking compared to modern MRIs. Uh, this is why he didn't get the Nobel Prize for MRI. You know, they people can understand if they're taught that God created the world, that means there are laws that exist, and by studying these laws, you can have the confidence that you can find out about new things. Teaching a bunch of kids evolution just might them make them feel depressed, or they might want to go off and do other things. You cannot be too optimistic about children wanting to be more scientifically advanced if you're just going to be teaching them evolution. For the next 50 years, if all you did was just teaching them evolution, you can get anywhere in scientific advancement. Wrong. We come to the conclusion that there are laws by observing phenomena and labeling them as such. It is a practical and fair assumption on our part to make things easier. Evolution is, for all intents and purposes, the truth. And teaching kids about it is never going to be a bad thing for scientific advancement. Uh, it's not depressing at all. And it's not going to be the thing that turns kids off science. It's teaching them a disrespect for methodological naturalism that's going to do that. Okay, Bill Nye brought up the thing about the ice core layers. Well, Bill Nye, those are not annual rings. You're assuming those are annual rings. That doesn't represent summer, winter, summer, winter. It represents warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. You can get five of those in one week around here. In other words, it represents summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. Temperature trends and weather changes aren't the same. Perhaps a lot of people to this day have not heard about the Lost Squadron, uh, one of those World War II airplanes that landed in Greenland, and there were over 250 feet of ice in 48 years, which accumulates for only about five and a half feet a year. The Lost Squadron is that deep for several reasons. Uh, but first, you need to understand that the thickness has nothing to do with the ice layers. Uh, the layers form at different rates in different places, as any reasonable person would expect. Now, that said, uh, the airplanes landed near the shore of Greenland, where snow accumulation is rapid, at about 2 meters per year, uh, allowing for some compaction due to the weight of the snow that accounts for the depth of the snow under which they are buried. The planes are also on an active glacier, and have moved about 2 kilometers since landing. Uh, ice core dating also takes place on stable ice fields and not active glaciers. 
The interior of Greenland, where ice cores were taken, receives much less snow. Uh, in Antarctica, where ice cores dating back more than 100,000 years have been collected, the rate of snow accumulation is much less still. And with rocks, people are just totally guessing out of the clear blue sky of how old rocks are. No, we're not. Cambrian rocks, for example, are definitely around 540 million years old. Permian, around 250 million years old. Cretaceous are like uh, 70. We know how old the rocks are. Claire Patterson wasn't guessing when he measured how old the Earth is. He knew. He didn't guess. And no scientist who does a radiometric measurement on the age of something is guessing. They know. Because they measured it. See, the geologic column was invented by people right out of the clear blue sky before there was rubidium strontium dating, radiocarbon dating. Also, none of those dating methods really work. If they don't work, why bring them up? Uh, I'm glad you did, though. Because radiometric dating is a very solid, reliable way of determining the age of something, as I just said. Uh, assuming you test the right kind of sample, it works, and it works very well. Okay, but it's all based on fallible opinions and assumptions. Oh, I, I didn't know that a measurable constant was an assumption. Forgive me. When known ages of some living organisms are tested, we know it does not work. It doesn't work because it's alive. Even carbon dating, the method used on organic samples, only works if the organism is dead. Next time, take a dead sample of known age. When you test a sample of unknown age, it's assumed to work. Because it's been demonstrated to work. Bill Nye also brought up the assumption about starlight. Well, it took a long time to get here, didn't it? Well, scientists have just recently discovered that starlight back in the, in the past was a hundred times more faster than it, than it is now. No, they didn't. I'd like to know the rate at which the speed of light has decreased. Uh, since you often know such statistics, I'll have to assume that it has decreased by 1% every 60 years. Assuming that you believe the universe is 6,000 years old, of course. If that were the case, the speed of light would have literally decreased by half since 1954. Uh, but if we compare the measurements done over the past 100 years, there is no significant change. Why is that? Now, of course, I do I could have a different rate of change in mind. But if that's what he thinks, he should have said so. And he should have provided evidence that the speed of light is changing at that rate, or that it is changing at all. He did neither, obviously. The question is not how did the starlight get from there to here, but how did the star get from here to there? That wouldn't matter at all, assuming it it is true. Uh, that wouldn't matter at all, assuming it were true. We, we know for sure that the star was there because the light came from there. We can, uh, you, you can claim the light has been moving faster than we think, if you like, but you cannot claim that the star is, in, is closer than we think. We can measure how far away it is using parallax. Also, tree rings. Oh, what about these uh, trees that are like uh, 9,000 years old, blah, blah, blah. Well, notice that none of these trees are like millions of years old, and all of them are only in the thousands. Did you know that a tree can grow more than one ring a year? Or less than one ring a year. But we can use other trees to account for those years because they will have the rings the skipped and won't have the extra rings. And you all posting in the comments, trolling and saying, I'm ignorant. Oh, you're ignorant of this. You're ignorant of this. No, I'm not ignorant. I'm trying to find out, find out the facts. I'm finally going to show this to you people. It's a bold thing I'm going to do. This is real ignorance. G.K. Chesterton said, if there were no God, there would be no atheists. I think that's precisely true. I'm going to be sticking this up up here so you guys can see this for yourself and understand something. Ah, oh, he's got a new poster for his collection. He thinks he's people. Seriously though, you might want to get Dawkins a Guy Fawkes mask too. I think it'd look really good on him. 
I've got this, which I'm also planning to hang up there, called 65 million years. Yeah, right. Ah, uh, he's got another one. Bill and I brought up the sedimentary layers. Well, petrification does not take a long time to petrify. Petrify petrification does not take long. There are petrified trees running through these multiple layers, connecting all of them. Sometimes these trees are found upside down. Now you have a real problem. Exactly. Upright fossils or polystrate fossils only occur among layers that form rapidly, as they form rapidly too. It's not impossible or unexplained as creation of the snake. You can see me talk a little bit more about it when I did Eden Juby. What about all those many layers deposited at Mount St. Helens? I bet over 50 years from now, some teacher is going to bring his students to that area and say, see these layers? This took a long time to form. And one of them will say, uh, no, my dad was here. He saw this all happen in just 40 minutes. Bill Nye, there is a lot of evidence of how dinosaurs have not died out recently, and they're just very rare right now. Particularly ones in the water are still alive, but ones on land are mostly gone because no one wants to live next door to a, to a dragon. And, and that's what they were called through most of history. <sighs> Dinosaurs are not dragons. Dragons have distinctly mammalian and avian characteristics and can't be mere reptiles. They are mythological creatures. Dinosaurs, however, aren't rare. They're just called birds now. Uh, but the purely reptilian dinosaurs I to eye is talking about have definitely been dead for 65 million years, give or take. And there is no such thing as an aquatic dinosaur. They are, there are only plesiosaurs, which are also extinct. Everybody knows that! This is dinosaur bones. Fresh dinosaur bones and fresh dinosaur uh, tissue and blood that was just recently discovered, and just to show that this is not millions of years old and that dinosaurs are still recent. No, we already know that the specimen is 68 million years old. And we know from the scientists who discovered the supposed tissue, Murray Schweitzer, that creationists like you have been misrepresenting her. For example, she didn't necessarily find blood, she found heme, uh, indicating that dinosaurs had red blood uh, and round structures that are likely to have been blood cells in the past, but she did not she did not find actual blood. Also, consider that this specimen was incredibly well preserved and quite unique as far as we know. And it's also important that the specimen was treated with a special acid. There are lots of factors that creationists are dishonestly leaving out. No one, especially not Mary, is going to have it. And they have always lived with people. Try to, people try to say, oh, dinosaurs and people together, or when the dinosaurs have eaten the people. Well, dinosaurs and people got the exact same size, especially before the flood. Go into a fucking museum. You hopefully live near one with a dinosaur bone collection. Go look at the bones and compare them to yourself. You'll find that they would have towered over you, you fucking moron. We were never that big. We couldn't be that big. And plus, the dragons would have been like, you know, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. It wasn't tyrannical like they were in movies, like they tried to shoot. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot of dinosaurs would have been like that. But some were clearly hunters. Come on, Velociraptor and its big cousin Deinonychus, for example, were definitely hunters. They were warm-blooded, bipedal carnivores. So you just put all those movies out of your head and try to focus on reality. What, what was that? Do you just put all those movies out of your head? No, 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 no. That, that thing you said after. Try to focus on reality. <laughs>
no modern day person worth their salt follows Darwin. Uh, no, they follow the modern day incarnations of the theories and principles that originate from Darwin. We follow the theory, not the scientists who discovered it. We follow the actual science and the actual evidence and the actual scientific literature. Stop self-projecting, you asshole. Something like 103 or something, but that's another long story. Darwin died before the first IQ test was conducted, so I would like to know, I try. I challenge you to pull up the source that shows Darwin had a 103 IQ. And then, I challenge you to show what the fuck that had to do with anything. And I might have to say, when I first saw a picture of Darwin, he looked like the saddest looking man I had ever seen in my life. I thought to myself, okay, whatever this guy believes, I want to have no part of it. Maybe because that's a fucking photo? No one smiled in photos in the 1800s. Now it's true that there are no paintings of Darwin smiling, but consider he doesn't frown in them. Also consider that everything written about him was... Uh, suggests that he was pretty normal. He wasn't sad or bitter at all. I mean, is, is that really your best shot to completely ad hom Darwin? Darwin didn't smile for his photo, so believing the facts he discovered is going to make you depressed? You fucking idiot. Don't get across the idea that Bill Nye has all the facts and Ken Ham is just based on faith. No. They have the same evidence and Bill Nye is bringing up a lot of mistakes and a lot of assumptions that are still in the textbooks. Oh yeah. And Bill Nye has all the facts from the literature, not the textbooks. Well, Ken Ham was based on faith. Ken Ham was bringing up a lot of assumptions and mistakes that are still in the Bible. And it's insulting that you're still projecting about this shit. Yo, Ken Holman's a convicted criminal, a tax fraud. No. This innocent man is in jail while criminals go free. Whether you like it or not, Kent Hovind is definitely a tax fraud. Uh, he, he might still be right. He might. His crimes have nothing against his ideas, but you can definitely see that him being a tax fraud is a good indication that maybe Ken Hoven isn't the most trustworthy guy, uh, which is confirmed when you analyze any of his shitty arguments. In the end, this debate was decent and was a lot of fun to watch. And I want to say, Ken Ham, you did a great job, and Bill Nye, you made your case, and Ken Ham made his case, and neither really, neither side really won. Bill Nye won. <laughs> Will you stop? Stop. Right, 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 right.